the di and dj, um, these are the vectors. So this is the um, direction um, of the row and columns. And by default, the um, column, if you notice, it says 0, 1, 0. So that's indicating that the direction of the column is moving in y one unit. So that's, a, that's, that's your y vector. Um, if you look at di, you'll notice that it is going 1, 0, 0. So that's actually your x vector. So let's go to the paneling tools menu again. And this time, let's take a look at the far right and check out Bake Grid. So because these have additional data that needs to be maintained, other than just the coordinates, there is a special object that allows you to bake them in, um, in Rhino. So let's take a look. If we take our grid right over to here, and we give the grid a name, remember we can always give these names, so I'll say my grid. The last thing we have to do is specify yes or no. And we can use our um, params input. This would be our Boolean toggle. We can double click and say true or false. So I'll say don't bake them, yes bake them, and toggle it back off. Now, this is baked as a group. And so if I go to my object properties, you'll see that it says name varies. So if I ungroup, I'll type in ungroup, and click on this guy, you'll see that the properties now indicate my grid 1, 0, 0, 0, right? 1, 1, 0, 1. So that, that reiterates the fact that the grid is actually structured as a unit space matrix um, of points with additional names. So I'm just going to group all this stuff and, and just put it over here for us to review later. Now luckily for us, we actually don't have to go through that process of baking it to Rhino if we want to use the grid because we can use that grid right here in, um, in Grasshopper. Now if I increase the points here, we can see that our grid will in fact become larger. So let's go ahead and save this. And um, I want to save this as um, our first exercise. Sorry about that. Um, This will be our PT um, planar grid. Let me just double check see what the name of that original file was. There it is, planar grid. And I always just put a W at the end, which indicates working. So now that we understand a little bit about how the grid is structured, you can see that if you just go over to paneling tools, grid, you could easily construct something like a polar grid instead if you wanted. So you can see here we have a, a polar grid. It's going to ask for a base point, so why don't we um, go ahead and just specify a new point. If you remember the workflow, we're going to just reference a point by right-clicking and setting one point. We'll give this a name. This is our base point. And this will just walk right over to here. And when that happens, you'll see that our grid updates again. Now, SR, the distance between points in the radial direction. We could always just copy and paste our sliders down. 
This would be our radial spacing. Again, these names are just being pulled from mousing over this guy, seeing what the inputs are asking for. And as I bring this down, you see it gets smaller. The angle in degrees between points in the polar direction, so this would be the, um, the angle between points, so this is our polar angle, we'll just say something like 5 degrees to maybe 30 degrees. Now we can change this and see that we can cover more or less space. Number of points in the radial direction, so we can just copy and paste these guys down. Our radial count. How many times do we want to grow out? And the number of points in the polar direction. So this would be our polar count. All right. So remember that edit group. We can call this our PT polar. Array. Perfect. So I'm going to save this as a new file. And we'll just call this Polar Grid, right? Just delete that stuff out of here. Just to ensure that these guys are still, you know, you can bake them out if you'd like to. You can always just kind of double click right up here and that'll send these points to um, to Rhino if you'd like. <clears throat>